A large portion of the chaos that crisis creates has to do with our ability to keep up with the rapid changes and then adequately communicate what is most important right now. Even the best teams are hit hard when the most important thing is changing from day to day and even hour to hour. To manage this well, I recommend a process that I call active prioritization. And here's how it works. First, the leadership team meets together to determine what is important now and who is responsible for it. Next, that information needs to be shared as quickly and as widely as possible. Uh, I'm assuming that care is used to protect sensitive information. Then, the organization's whole might needs to be put toward those tasks that are deemed most important. And then, as changes occur, the leadership team needs to get together and reprioritize the entire list, including everything that was on the last list that has not yet been finished, and repeat the process. Now, in order to for this to work in your business, your leaders, they have to be at the top of their game. You'll notice that I used the word important in step one. Now, this is terribly unnatural. You see, in crisis, our attention goes to that which is most urgent. And while sometimes urgent and important tasks are the same, this is often not the case. And great teams can lose their way in crisis because they get stuck in a loop of chasing urgent fires, putting them out just to do it all over again. To break out of this cycle, you and your team, you have to work together to resist the relentless pool of those urgent fires. At the start of the crisis, you'll first focus on those issues that are both urgent and important, but then you have to shift your focus to those things which are important but not urgent. This is really difficult to do, and that's why it separates the great teams from the average ones. This difficulty is also why it creates such an immense competitive advantage for those who do the hard work. While everyone else is still stuck putting out the fires and trying to get things back to normal, you and your team will be leaping forward and taking ground in the process. And when that happens, you need to make sure that you celebrate every win, especially the small ones at the beginning. In the next video, I'll give you a few ways that you can celebrate the win without spending much time or money in the process.